Hello everyone, it's a Friday again, if you can believe that. And I'm going on another trip, and it's very foggy today, but not raining. I'm in Corvallis, and I'm waiting for the Flix bus. I just got off of my Flix bus, and I'm in Salem, Oregon. The fog is starting to melt off a little, but it's still pretty cold and foggy. And uh, I have an hour here. This is Salem Center. It's a downtown shopping mall with sky bridges. When I was 10 or 11 years old, that was super nifty, getting to go to the mall and go on the sky bridges. And I actually wanted to make a separate video to show what it was like, but it doesn't open until uh, 10 a.m. So instead I'm just gonna walk around Salem and then wait for another bus. This is the Chariots, downtown Salem Transit Center. And I've been by here many times. I think this is the, f no, of course this is the first time. This is the second time I've been here on a bus because I took the 10X back here um, when I went to Woodburn. And right now I'm waiting for a bus to Silverton. This is Silverton, Oregon, about 12 miles east of Salem. Got here on a little bus. And we're back closer to the mountains, which is why it is foggy. And I'm gonna walk around Silverton a little bit and see what's here. Like some uh, Willamette Valley towns, and mo more than most, uh, Silverton still has a downtown. Um, you know, we saw in McMinnville there's a downtown there, but uh, Silverton is really concentrated on this old downtown, local businesses. Um, one reason it's a nice place to visit. This is the Silverton Theater. Um, this is one of the things Silverton is known for, uh, that the owner of this theater, or the former owner of this theater, who's now passed away, um, was Stu Rasmussen, who was the mayor of this city on several occasions and was also the first transgender mayor in the United States. Um, and that is a little bit of a contradiction because, you know, this is a small rural town, or is it? Some, but not all, of the businesses in downtown Silverton are related to tourism. Um, and I don't object to tourism. Um, but like in most towns, you know, you have the tourist part and then you have the rest of the part. Um, today I'll be seeing a little bit of both. So when I say this is a tourist town, this is two reasons why. In that direction, in about a dozen miles, is Silver Falls. Um, which is a beautiful state park with about a dozen waterfalls, a lot of them over 100 feet. And then in the other direction is the Oregon Garden, which is a uh, large cultivated garden, including it has a house there built by Frank Lloyd Wright. This is Silver Creek. Um, this is the creek that the Silver Creek Falls lead into. Um, beautiful creek and as you can see it's right next to downtown and you can like have a restaurant and you can eat along the river or creek. Um, so this is another unique thing about the city. This is another famous story in Silverton. This is the Kali Bobby um, who came home to Silverton for some misfortune. He was left in Indiana and his family was in Silverton and through some method and this is kind of the mystery he walked all the way west for thousands of miles to reunite with his family. Uh, collies are very loyal, even more than most dogs. <gasps> this little bridge is, is very magical. I'm gonna go and walk and see what's here. So there we have a community center. Here we have a library. I got a helpful little map there. And right here we have the Silverton Historical Society Museum. So this area has a lot of uh, local flavor and a lot of natural beauty. And uh, some of that natural beauty I'm gonna see once I leave the parking lot. Well, there's a bridge here, but it looks like the bridge is closed. 
the bridge is not closed, but there is work here, including there's two people in the water, and I hope they're staying warm, because it's like freezing out, literally. So we are in a park along the bank of the river. Today I actually only have uh, two hours here, so on another day, maybe I would see how far this trail goes. Uh, today I'm just going to walk for five minutes and uh, then turn around, go back into town. So the trail just kind of petered out and it kind of is making my decision for me of where to turn around because that looks really muddy. Not good for the trail or for me to continue if that, isn't even a, if that even is a trail. So I'm just going to turn around, walk back to town, which was going to be the major focus of this trip. I also might someday take a more nature-oriented trip to this area further into spring, but for now, I'm just seeing the town. It might not be super obvious from these views, and I might be imagining this, but, um, you know, Silverton, I think it's only a few hundred feet up, but it is getting into where we're getting more into the Cascades and out of the Willamette Valley. So the climate here is a little bit colder and a little bit wetter, and so the vegetation is more pine trees, which we also have pine trees in the Willamette Valley, obviously. Um, but this is more into getting into pine forests and not into the oak woodland that I would have around Corvallis. So this is a typical residential neighborhood or a type of typical residential neighborhood. Uh, houses look like they're arts and crafts or bungalow style, so 1930s or earlier. And... Uh, yeah, it's a, a nice place to be. Um, one thing for me is actually, I don't know if I've been here for 20 years. I think it was like 2004 or something was the last time I was in Silverton. I'd have to think about that. Um, I knew I went to Silver Falls in 2009. So it's new to me in a lot of ways, even though, you know, I went here a lot as a kid, went to the falls a lot as a kid. Um, but this might be the first time that I've been like, actually walked around in Silverton. Um, so this is new to me. I also saw this little sign with some lessons from Fred Rogers, and I'm counting off to myself how many of those I'm doing. I think today I'm doing at least half of them. So some of the architecture looks like it's a little bit older, like that house up there. There's a bungalow in the foreground. Um, and I'd have to know a little bit more about the history of the town, but as far as I know, like a lot of towns in Oregon, this was um, formed as a natural resource town in the uh, 1800s for um, logging, also for farming. Um, so a lot of these houses probably date from then and then, you know, as the town matured, the economy matured, and probably a lot of people then moved in here in the first part of the 1900s, and people are still moving in. Um, so there is a variety of architecture. A lot of it is really nice. I like it. So from here, it's 15 miles to Staten, a city I have walked to many years ago. And I have actually bicycled here 1996 or so. So this is inside my bicycling logic, not inside my walking logic. Maybe that's something I'll do. So this isn't totally the edge of town. There's still a little bit of town that way, uh, but it's kind of the edge of the really easily walkable part. So I'm gonna turn around and continue this way. And here we have a shopping plaza with a Safeway and with a Dollar Tree. And this is really um, about as big as the chain businesses get in Silverton. Uh, and that's one thing I like about Silverton is I've talked before about other cities in Oregon. Either they're too small to have essential services or they're so big that you get like a lot of sprawl. Um, and Silverton is kind of just right because it has, you know, it has a Safeway. You can get, you know, groceries at a reasonable price. Um, and it also has like a hospital and stuff like that. So it has those basic services. Um, but notice that this is not like a gigantic, you know, six lane highway sprawl or something. Um, and that was actually, you know, one of the things, I don't know the entire history, but that was one of the things Stu Rasmussen worked for. He said, keep Silverton, Silverton. Um, and of course there are like some problems with that because that also means this city doesn't really have transit. Um, you know, there's the bus to Salem that comes four times a day. 
Um, but in a lot of ways, I really like it. This is like kind of my ideal city in a way. Bicycles have been a trend or really more a way of life in Oregon in the past couple decades. And this is a bicycle friendly community, but this is not a recent development. So I'm back in uh, the center of town. Still have a little bit of time here. I might find something to eat. Um, so kind of the main point I wanted to make, and it's, it's kind of an obvious point, but maybe not obvious enough, is that, you know, in the past decade, there's been a lot of division. You know, this is urban America. This is rural America. This is red America. This is blue America. This is progressive. This is uh, conservative. This is white collar. This is blue collar. Uh, big questions about authenticity. It's kind of become a, a mirage to chase. And so the reason I want to show Silverton is like, in some ways, this is a small traditional town. Um, like, you know, this is, in some ways, this is a small traditional town. Um, you know, and it's in a rural area, 10,000 people in Marion County, which is 300,000 people, which is still not that big. Um, but on the other hand, you know, this was the first city in the United States to get a transgender mayor. Um, and so, you know, there's kind of a stereotype, you know, that New York and San Francisco, the big cities, are where that happens. Um, and so I just wanted to show, you know, this is, this is a town that you could take two ways. This is a Necker, Necker cube of a town. Um, in some ways, this is a, um, you know, in some ways, this is a small farming town. Um, in other ways, this is like a kind of urban place with stuff going on. Um, and in some ways, also, some of that's facile because, um, you know, tourism is not the basis of a town. You can't just have a town totally based around tourism. Uh, not, a, not a large town. Um, so some of that, like, you know, you get a little bit out of town and then you, out of downtown, and then you see the other side, you know. But I did just want to show, you know, there's a lot going on here. And hopefully I've shown enough that you can decide on your own what type of town this is. So we have a pod here, cart pod, there's only four of them. Maybe there would be more if it was not, you know, January, did I mention it's January? And this is super high tech because I actually got this like little key, electronic key and I can like sit here under a heat lamp and wait for this to buzz. So uh, yeah, it's another good thing about Silverton. And uh, also, we have an outdoor patio here and this would again be more pleasant in be more pleasant in spring or summer but you could like just sit here eat your pizza and watch the river watch the creek and actually now that i say that i have no idea why i would ever do anything else with my life than eat pizza by the side of this creek so i'm at the bus shelter I'm waiting for my bus. I have 10 minutes to go. Um, the bus in that direction continues on to Woodburn through Mount Angel. Um, I've been to Woodburn. Haven't been to Mount Angel for a long time. I'd like to take a trip there. Um, and this is a really nice bus shelter for a bus that only comes five times a day. Um, and one thing is, is like, you know, even though I talked about this city is nice and small and charming, one thing is that without a transit system, you can't have a downtown like this for long you know, as it gets bigger, because then, you know, everybody's going to park downtown. You have to widen streets. There's, you know, not a nice place where pedestrians can stroll and eat. Um, so it works for this because it's like a tourist town. But if and when this city gets bigger, you know, not having a transit system, all the people that live in the neighborhoods outside of downtown, if they do want to visit downtown, are going to be driving here. So that is one thing um, that a lot of times... A lot of times smaller towns can remain charming because they don't have those problems yet. Um, so it's kind of like on the surface. And I'm not saying that to be too negative, but uh, you know, like a lot of tourist towns, this city can exist for a while because it's a small tourist town. As it gets bigger, it will have other problems. Uh, so at least that's my, my way of looking at it. Um, but still, it's a really nice place. Uh, I had a fun day today and I'm gonna be taking this bus back to Salem. I just got off the bus and I'm in Salem. 
have to make it to the train station, but I have two hours to make it there. So I'm going to see some other stuff while I'm here. So there's the train station. 20 minutes my train will be getting here, so I don't have to wait too long. So here I am at the train tracks uh, and the train station in Salem. And I've probably complained enough about the last mile pro problem that I'm not going to do it again. Just kidding. Um, so again, like this was a last mile problem or connection problem. Um, I could do it because I had an entire day free and I'm kind of into this type of stuff. Um, but for the average person, like getting to, to and from uh, Silverton by transit is pretty difficult. And getting to and from Silverton and then another city off the corridor is really difficult. So I had to take a Flix bus, um, a local bus, a local bus back. Now I'm going to take the train, then I'm going to take a bus, uh, the loop bus from Albany to Corvallis. Um, so all of this, you know, it can be done. Um, but you just have to get a little bit off the corridor and it's basically, it's a pseudo puzzle to get where you're trying to go. Um, you know, and I shouldn't complain too much, but I, you know, I just wanted to lay that out there. That again, uh, transportation, tra public transit around the Willamette Valley outside of big cities and outside of the I-5 corridor, you have to get up pretty early in the morning, literally and figuratively to do it. Anyway, but I do get a chance to ride a train, and that always makes me happy. And here's the Coast Starlight coming in. It's a little bit more than 15 minutes late. It was supposed to be on time, so I, we all came out and been waiting for a while. Not terribly long, but you know, on a cold day, it all is, is hard. And I'm gonna stop recording because I gotta get on the train. So the train was quick to board, and I'm only on it for about like half an hour. But I always feel adventurous because this is a train to Los Angeles. I'm only taking it about like 30 miles, but hey, I'm on this train that goes a thousand miles south. So. All this feels exciting. I think this is also my third trip on the Coast Starlight in the past two months. Once to California and then I took it as a local train as well. So we're rolling through south of Salem and I'll have like about 10 minutes to enjoy the lounge car or so before it's time to start get disembarking.
I just got off the train in Albany. There's happy people. And I'm gonna go see how long I have to wait for a bus. Frame rule. Because it was a little bit late, I will have to wait another hour for this bus to come. Um, normally it wouldn't bother me, but that means also it will be dark at that time. And also, I will be getting home at dark, and I'm pretty tired today. Um, but I'm going to stop complaining about that for a second. Uh, so one thing about this camera is for a long time I had a lot of memories and a lot of ex experiences I wanted to express about what it was like growing up here. And I always wanted to put those on paper, but it was hard to find an audience and it was hard to find exactly what I wanted. So then I got this camera and it was like a key and it unlocked a lot of things. I can just walk around and see what I see. The other side of that though is what I've recorded, you know, when I walk around and I can start recording, I've realized that a lot of what I thought was happening, um, you know, there was a lot of objective holes of even places I thought I knew well. And then as soon as I get a camera and start recording them, I realized they were a lot different than they, they were in my memories. So make of that what you will. Um, and I can't really make anything of it right now. I've uh, had a lot to stir up. Like I said, I haven't been to Silverton for 20 years. So, you know, it, stirred, it, it opened up a lot and I have a lot to think about and hopefully a lot to show. Uh, but now it's time to go home eventually and rest. I'm back in Corvallis. And uh, there's still some light in the sky. Almost 6 p.m., but there's still some light in the sky. That's nice. Okay, very tiring day. Out, got 10 hours. Time to go home. One final note. This was a four county trip. Uh, the main focus of the trip was Silverton, but uh, went to Benton, Polk, Marion, and Lynn County. The Polk portion, I just crossed the river really quickly into Polk County when I was in Salem. So, uh, eh, better than my New Year's Day when I only did three, three counties. Today it's four. That's quite an accomplishment.